In this HVACR training video, we're going over five scenarios on how to check the refrigerant charge in this R410A air conditioning unit. We're going to be using the total superheat method to check the refrigerant charge because this unit has a piston as the metering device at the indoor unit. Now we're going to assume that we already checked the airflow and that's correct. And I'm going to be going over five scenarios. The first scenario, I'm going to show you how to determine if it's undercharged, correctly charged, or overcharged. In the next four scenarios, those are designed so that you can solve those yourself. So here we have scenario one and we need to focus on the blue gauge and the temperature on the large vapor line because we're using the total superheat method. This system needs to be running for about 15 minutes before checking the charge and right before checking the charge, we need to determine what the target superheat is. So we need to take a outdoor dry bulb temperature measurement and in this case, you see it's 75 degrees. We also need a indoor wet bulb temperature measurement in the return air duct, and in this case, it's 60 degrees. We're gonna line them up on a target superheat chart, or you can also use a calculator like over at our website here, and you see that we have a target superheat of 12 degrees. Now let's look at our blue gauge, and we have a pressure measurement of 118 PSI. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 40 degrees, using the needle on the gauge or a calculator or a PT chart, but in this case, we're just using the gauge face and you see that it aligns to 40 degrees. Our line temperature is 52 degrees. So to find the total superheat, we take 52 degrees minus 40 degrees and we're left with an actual total superheat of 12 degrees. So because our target superheat is 12 and our actual is 12, we are accurately charged. We just need to make sure that our total superheat is plus or minus two degrees from our target. So if the superheat is too high, then that means we're undercharged. And if the superheat is too low, then that means we're overcharged. Here's scenario two, our outdoor dry bulb temperature is 85 degrees. Our indoor wet bulb temperature is 66 degrees. So our target superheat is gonna be 15 degrees. On our blue gauge, we measure 133 PSI and our line temp is 49 degrees. If you're gonna solve this, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so our pressure measurement is 133 PSI. We convert that to an R410A saturated temperature of 46 degrees. Our line temp is 49 degrees. So to find our total superheat, we take 49 degrees minus 46 degrees, and we're left with an actual total superheat of three degrees. So we take three degrees and we compare that to our target superheat of 15 degrees, and we know that we are overcharged. In this scenario, our superheat is very low, and that could be a danger to the compressor. And so we really need to recover some refrigerant out of the small liquid line while the system is running in order to get our actual total superheat closer to our target. In scenario three, we measure outdoor dry bulb temperature of 95 degrees and an indoor wet bulb temperature of 68 degrees. So our target superheat is 14 degrees. Now over on our blue gauge, we measure 128 PSI and we have a line temp of 57 degrees. If you're gonna solve this, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so our pressure is 128 PSI. We convert that to an r 4 a saturated temperature of 44 degrees, and we take 57 degree line temp minus 44 degree sat temp, and we're left with an actual total superheat of 13 degrees. Now, 13 degrees is very close to our target of 14 degrees. So the actual total superheat is within one degree of our target superheat, so this system is correctly charged. In scenario four, we have an outdoor dry bulb temperature of 90 degrees and an indoor wet bulb temperature of 66 degrees. So our target is 13 degrees. Now on our blue gauge, we measure a pressure of 109 PSI and we have a line temp of 59 degrees. If you're gonna solve this, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so on our blue gauge, we have a pressure of 109 PSI. We convert that to an r 4 a saturated temperature of 36 degrees, and we take 59 degree line temp minus a 36 degree sat temp, and we're left with 23 degrees as our actual total superheat. Now, 23 degrees is 10 degrees away from our target superheat. In this scenario, we would need to search for any refrigerant leaks, and if we were gonna add refrigerant, we would do that into the low side of the system while the unit is running. As we add refrigerant, our total superheat will decrease and will be closer to our target. In scenario five, we have an outdoor dry bulb temperature of 90 degrees and an indoor wet bulb temperature of 68 degrees. So our target is 16 degrees. 
Now on our blue gauge we have a pressure of 99 psi and we have a line temp of 73 degrees. If you're going to solve this, go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so we have 99 psi on the blue gauge. We convert that to an R4 tonight saturated temperature of 31 degrees and our line temp is 73 degrees. So we take 73 degrees minus 31 and we're left with an actual total superheat of 42 degrees. Now there's two big indicators that this unit is severely undercharged. One is that we're 26 degrees higher than our target superheat. So right there we know that we're undercharged. The other big indicator is that our saturated temperature on the low side of the system is below 32 degrees. So if you allow that system to run, the indoor coil is just going to freeze solid. So we know in this case that we really need to search for the refrigerant leak on this system. So if you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge or even preparing a system for refrigerant or troubleshooting a system by reading the, the saturated temperature, superheat, subcoin, and our delta T, make sure you check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, which we have on our website. And you can test yourself by using our thousand question workbook. You can also use our quick reference cards, which are made out of polystyrene. They'll hold up real well outside. We have all of our physical products there at our website at acservicetech.com and also over at Amazon. We also have our ebook available on Google Play, iTunes, and our website. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.